So I've run into the K camper van again. This thing and I have become very good friends over the years. And tonight we're gonna do a little bit of camping out. The, the wind in this thing is just, I, mean, I don't know if you can hear that, but we're on the highway right now and you can hear all of the wind. This is, this is something else. We're gonna be doing a little bit of camping tonight. And because we are outside of the camping season, I thought this would be a great chance to try some roadside station camping. We are passing through the area of Odaiba right now. And today we're taking a little bit of a special route. We're actually going over to Chiba, a place that I rarely ever go. There's two ways that you can go there. You can go over the long way, or there's this really cool route that cuts under the water called the Aqua Line. I've only ever taken it once before. Okay, that description may actually make it sound cooler than it really is. The, the aqua line that goes across. It's really just an incredibly long tunnel, but there's something right in the middle that I'm looking forward to. And this is what it's like to be in the aqua line. Basically just one very long tunnel. Now the cool part is off to the side, it shows you how many kilometers you have left until you resurface. The really cool thing if you slow it down is that those kilometer markers, while they look really normal from head on, I guess as we're driving, if you slow it down as you pass by, they're incredibly elongated so that they look normal at this speed. Now this little base just built right into the middle of the water here is called the Umi Hotaru, or the Firefly of the Ocean. This place kind of looks like a little battleship in the middle of the ocean. I've put the drone up and show you, except for the fact that this is right in the flight path of Haneda Airport. So we're not putting the drone up, but Google Maps is also a great tool to get a peek at it. And right here on this floor, there's a bunch of vending machines, but let's go check out what's inside. So we've got a north cabin over here, right here in the south cabin. There's a Starbucks over here. There's a whole gift and souvenir shop over here. And this, this is what it looks like outside today. It's such a beautiful day. And of course, as with anywhere important in Japan, this Umi Hotaru place has its own Umi Hotaru characters. They, I don't know, are those cute? Are those cute? Let me know. There's also a view deck out here, which would be a lot nicer if we had blue skies. I swear this area is really beautiful on a nice day. Also made the right call because there's a drone ban, so I'm gonna put it up anyway. But on the plus head, there's fish heads that you can sit on. Those are kind of all season. And there's this captain's wheel, which will make you feel like you're, tell me that it at least moves. It... That is so mean. That, it doesn't, what? Who, why would they do that? Can you imagine being a little kid and thinking, oh, I'm gonna, and then it doesn't move? That's just, and also there's, <laughs> I, I love the view map here. Usually the view map has the view, and, well, this, the view here is nothing. That's, <laughs> that's the view. You get a view of nothing and they've made a map of it. And then you've got this, this promenade here. Does it count as a promenade? It is along the sea, but it's not a, Ooh, clutter. It's, it's a promenade. It's fine. I like the lanterns in this restaurant though. I want ones this big for my office. <laughs> They're so unnecessarily large. There's also an entire arcade over here. This place is spectacular to come in the summer. Maybe not so much in the winter. And there's a convenience store down this way. Now, a lot of travelers use these roadside stations to stay overnight, as we're gonna be doing today. I actually had to look this one up because it closes from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., but people do stay here. It is entirely possible to park your car and sleep here overnight in your car, but we will. A little more on that later. You can't really see it, but the guy beside me here just pulled in in like a 45 degree angle blocking the front. I can still get out, but still. With that, we are on our way and losing daylight rather quickly. On the positive side, the rest of the way is above ground, but on the minus side, the wind is incredibly strong right now, and this car weighs nothing. 
absolutely nothing. So we're gonna <laughs> just, just try and keep her on the road. Honestly, no matter how many years I am in Japan, I never get used to seeing palm trees here. I know they're here, they're everywhere, but you just don't associate Japan with palm trees naturally in your mind. Brief stop here at the Kimitsu parking area, not to be confused with the Kimetsu parking. I don't even think this one's really, it's literally just a restroom. And there's a quick charge point for an EV over here. I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, this one would have some shops and restaurants and something, something. But some of them are just bare bones like this, where you have a restroom right here, beautifully contrasted against the blue sky, some vending machines, and for some reason, a tower of potted plants that could only be described as the mystery flowers. I can't tell if they have a smell. They might have a faint smell. Jury's out on it. But these parking areas, for example, it is completely okay to spend the night here, to sleep here during the afternoons. I do it all the time on my adventures. Also, usage of these places is governed by what's called common sense rules. We'll go over that a little bit more when we get to our Michi no Eki that we're going to be staying at tonight, which is not a parking area along the highway. It's actually a roadside station right in a town. And that's it, I just kind of want to show you guys this. So let's, also I cannot tell you how much I have missed this little camper van. Just adventures and being on the road in general, this year is gonna be a really, really fun year for that. If you've never seen this little camper van before and all the craziness, I will list, a, it's getting so dark, no. I, I will link some videos up here, everything from like a full review and tour of this to some insane adventures that I've done in it. But for now, for now, I have no idea where I put the key. It's in my pocket. It is exactly where I want it to be. All right. And this is our Michi no Eki, which is a formerly abandoned elementary school. So that that's pretty cool. It's a little cold and windy and you see how the camper vans are actually parked really far from the building, the entrance itself. That's one of those common sense or courtesy things. That way when people start coming in in the morning and whatnot, there's actually places for them to park. Another one they ask you not to do is to leave your vehicle idling like this 7-Eleven truck. It's like 540 everything is closed already. Unfortunately, a lot of the Michi no Eki across or roadside stations across Japan actually close up at about 5 p.m. This one looks like it would have been a ton of fun. This is for abandoned elementary school. This place is, is beautiful. I want to get up to the upper floors, see if we can check that out. While it's very, very different, this makes me want to go back and visit Yochan his abandoned elementary school out in Shikoku. This, look at this place. It looks like there's actually a public bath here as well. No, and it closes so early. Why does it close so early? So you get the woman's bath here and the men's bath here, but it closes so early. You're looking at 4 p.m. on weekdays and 2 p.m. on weekends. It doesn't open till 1030. Like I know it's not a heavily populated area, but still they've got the old desks and chairs set up in there and oh, <sighs> the really heartbreaking part of this is that I will be gone tomorrow morning before any of this wakes up in order to get to my destination. <laughs> And this isn't exactly the kind of place that you just be randomly passing through either. You actually have to make an effort to come out here. There's like an information center, a playroom for kids. There's a pizzeria. You have me sold at pizzeria. And there's one place down here at the end that has the lights on. I'm hoping, hoping that maybe it'll be something. What? Oh no, that is. Okay, walking away. That was like a cooking class or something. And as I came around the corner, everybody in the room turned their heads all at once. So this is called the Hota Show or Hota Elementary Michi no Eki Roadside Station. And with the wind and the temperature right now, this sweater is not enough. So I'm gonna... K truck. 
<laughs> it's electric. And it still looked like it was 30 years old. They must have just changed it out. That, that is neat. There is actually a whole EV charging station hidden back in the corner there as well. Japan's roadside stations are not only great little rest areas, but each and every one of them is like this tiny little portal into local culture where you can learn about the area, try out local foods. In fact, the one on Sakurajima Volcano has these giant daikon radishes that legend has it are the biggest in Japan. Now, how do I set this up again? I, it's been a while and I don't remember. I also never know where to put my shoes. Now, there is this pop-up top up here. This whole thing here just lifts right up, making the whole space a lot less claustrophobic, a lot more spacious. But the name of the game today is going to be warmth, considering that it is nearing zero degrees outside. By the way, these ultralight down jackets, these, this is just one of the best, best purchases I've ever made. Not sponsored, just highly recommend. If you come to Japan, get it's easy to take on. And also some of those common courtesy points for singing to meet you. Nike. First off, one space. You're allowed to take up one parking space, which means I won't be putting out the awning today. Additionally, no tents. Some people actually come out and set up tents. It's become a problem and they're starting to crack down to make the rules a lot more strict. It kind of ruins it for everybody. Also, I think it goes without saying, maybe it doesn't, no campfires. You can cook, but all cooking needs to be done within your vehicle. I usually carry around a bit of a camping set that had, but this just feels like too small of a space for me to light a fire and I don't really need to light a fire anyway because I have a microwave right here. I also have a salad and a ham and cheese burrito from 7-Eleven. And it works nicely. I also love that you can get just burritos at 7-Eleven as a thing. Mmm. The last bite was, last bite was cold. You know, the last camping video that I did was the rooftop camping video in Akihabara. Still by far one of my favorites. Don't know if I would do that in the winter. You know, if we get hit with some snow, if we get hit with some snow, maybe I'll do it. This is my strategy. One ultra light down tiny sleeping bag that I put inside of a normal sleeping bag. And when you combine them together, they are surprisingly warm. Plus this has a heater that I've never had the chance to try out because I've never used this thing in the winter. This is gonna be my first time using this in the winter, but I need to wake up in just a few hours for tomorrow's adventure. So for now, good. Night. No. I got all set up, ready to sleep, and I realized amateur mistake. I, I've got a pillow. Don't even have some extra clothes to fold up because not gonna be on the road that long. <laughs> not everybody needs a pillow to sleep. Do you? I do. I'm a pillow sleeper. If you've also ever wondered how I fit in here, diagonally, diagonally is my friend, and memory apparently is not. Actually, you know what? I just, I have not one, but two, two jackets, false alarm. I think we're gonna be all right. And I have arrived at my destination for the day. And while this super moody, rainy, foggy forest in the middle of Chiba does have its own aesthetic appeal, my goal for today is actually over here this abandoned log house. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm not gonna say much more about it. That is gonna have to be a story for another time. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you again real soon.